creating a flowchart in Microsoft Excel. Useful for basic flowcharts. If you've got anything more complicated, use Microsoft Visio. But there are these shapes available in Excel and lines to join the shapes. You can also create an off-page reference. If I click on this shape here, it takes me to a sub-process on a separate sheet. I'll also show you how to create a cross-functional flowchart. Okay, let's see how this can be done. Blank workbook. First thing I'm going to do is create a grid that will help us line things up on our chart. And to do this, you're best going to the view tab on your ribbon and changing the view to page layout. And the reason I'm doing this is you can specify the height and width of cells using centimeters or inches in the page layout view, whereas you can't do that in the normal view. So now we're in that page layout view. If you select all the cells by clicking in the top left hand corner, go to home tab, format in the cells group, row height. 0.5 centimeters and the same for column width 0.5 centimeters so i've now got my grid now i've done that i can go back to normal view let's zoom in a little bit now to get some flowchart shapes onto your worksheet go up to the insert tab on your ribbon and in the illustrations group you've got a shapes menu and down at the bottom here, you've got flowchart shapes. So we'll start with a terminator shape. And I'm just going to draw it in roughly to begin with. One thing that you are going to find useful is to get your shapes to snap to the grid lines. So with the shape still selected, I'm going to go on the align menu. This is still on the shape format tab. And there is the option to snap to grid. So that's useful when you're positioning, but also when you're resizing your shape, you'll see it'll snap to the grid lines. I'm going to have my shape. So it's three rows deep and one, two, three, four, five columns wide. And now in terms of changing the look of the shape, a very quick way of doing that, still on the shape format tab, go to the shape styles gallery and you can choose a shape style from this list. Now I'm just going to type start in here. To change the alignment of the text, just go back to your home tab. You can use vertical alignment and horizontal alignment. It'll also make the text bold. Now I want two more occurrences of this shape. So control D twice, duplicate the shape. I have one over here. Finish. And this one is also going to be finish. Now, if I go back to shape format, you can see the shape menu is now readily available to me on this contextual tab. So I can go down to flowchart shapes, and the normal process shape is this rectangle shape here. And I'm going to create that process shape and type in step one and I will change the alignment, make it bold and control D two times to create the other steps. Let's change these step numbers. And then I'm going to have a decision shape in here. If I select one of the shapes, shape format, go to the drop down, and there's the decision shape. Yes, no. If I decrease the size of the font there, align it properly and embolden it. Now I'm just going to change the spacing here a little bit worry about alignment of the shapes later on. In fact, we can do that now. If I select all of these shapes here, start by selecting the decision shape, hold down shift, select the other shapes, go up to shape format, align, align center. Now I'm going to draw little arrows between the shapes. 
So again, on my shape format tab, I'll go to this insert shapes gallery. I'm going to use this line arrow here. And what you'll notice is if I hover over a shape, it gives me these little connection circles. So I drag from there to here, and I'll also get connection circles on the step one shape. I'm going to change the look of that shape, that arrow shape. So let's change it to a gray color and also change its weight. And then I'm going to set this as the default arrow shape. So I right click, set as default line. And now when I create new arrows, they always default to this format. Now I'm going to create an off-page reference shape, which is this shape here. I'll draw it here. I'll change the color of it. And I want this to connect to a sub-process. So I'll call this sheet process, and I'll create another sheet called sub-process. And I'll quickly create a little process for us on this sheet. Okay, so I want to link this shape to this sub process. Let's just put a little line in that connects step two to this connector shape. Right click on the new shape, go to link, insert link. And then you need to go to place in this document, you may land on this option by default, go to place in this document, and then you can choose the sheet you want to link to. And then when I hover over that shape, I now get a little hand that points at it. If I click on it, it goes to that shape. Now, if you want to get rid of the grid lines in the background of your process, you just go to view and untick grid lines there. Okay, let's see how we can create a cross-functional flowchart. So we'll create a new sheet. And again, we'll do the same thing with the grid lines. View, page layout. Change the view back to normal. Zoom in a little bit. I'm going to select from rows two down to six and then across the page. And I'm going to add some borders. So on the home tab of my ribbon, I'm going for a top border and a bottom border and also a right border. Then I'm going to select the cells in the first column there. I'm going to change the background color to blue and the text to white. And I'm going to merge and center the cells. I'm just going to write function one in there. Then with that merge cell selected, home tab on my ribbon, I'm going to go to this alignment launcher button. And I'm going to drag this little dial vertically, 90 degrees, click on OK, and then I'm going to center it vertically. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these cells, control C, paste down here, Paste down here, and paste down here. And then if I select that cell, let's get rid of the marching ants first with the escape key. I've selected that cell and I'm gonna drag this little fill handle down and it'll create the other function numbers for me. You'd want to write something more descriptive in there, obviously. So now it's a matter of putting the shapes in as we did in the previous example. So insert illustration shapes. And you can see that the shapes that we've recently used now appear at the top of this shapes list. So I'll go ahead and create a little flowchart for us. And then it would just be a matter of linking these shapes together using the default arrow that we've created.
Now we need a slightly different arrow here. We need an elbow arrow. And if you look at the options you have here, this one will work. Elbow arrow. Okay, so it's a very basic cross-functional flowchart, but hopefully you get the idea. And that is all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.